Update 2.5 is live. It's time to update your Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher. Seems like we are halfway through this generation of Affinity software. So let's check out what's new with this update. I highlight seven new features. And the first one I want to talk about is a brand new tool for Affinity Designer. With this stroke width tool, we can easily adjust the width of the stroke. Simply select the line, pick the new tool from the tool panel on the left. Then, when you're hovering your mouse, you will see that this tool kind of detecting the line. If you click and hold, you can control the width of the line in that point. Then you can create another control point here. Make it really tiny. Over there. One more here. Very nice tool. Just in my line for drawing back the shapes. Let's look into stroke panel right now and open up the pressure. As you can see, all of those changes are here in the pressure panel as well. Even add a new point in the pressure panel, it's also showing here. So that's nice. All of that is, of course, a vector based, non destructive way. At the top, you may notice that you got some options. We can lock width of the line in some points, we can lock points ordering, snapping. And we can snap with to the same curve. If you turn on that, you will be able to see how the line try to snap to maintain the nice curve in certain points. You see those violet points? They try to help me out adjusting my width. So that's nice. Really smart tool. I really like this one. That's only for designer though. What is for all three apps is the next tool I want to talk about. That's QR code tool. So we can now generate QR codes from within the program here without any third party apps. Finally, to do that, simply open up the long list for all of your shapes and you should be able to see QR code tool at the bottom. Then you draw it like you draw any other shape. Of course, we can adjust the color of it. We can put some styles of this kind of stuff, but be careful. Keep it clean. It's QR code, so we cannot overdo it. Keep in mind, if you're going to print this out, it should be at least 20 millimeter high, 2 centimeters. I know that nowadays phones can scan even smaller QR codes, but that's still in the official documentation at least two centimeters high all right so how can i change the link inside this qr code here at the top take a look we can easily put our link here we can clear the existing one paste our link we can also change the type can be text can be link can be email whatsapp facetime wi-fi whatever you need we can generate qr code easily from the program now it's with your shape tools all right what's next our third feature of course variable fonts now we can install and use variable fonts in all three programs so what is variable font that's a special font with extra controls if you open up your font panel you will see the font type on the right side. The one that is variable got this V. So you can kind of scatter your fonts. Maybe you already got some variable fonts on your list. You can also filter through fonts. So you can filter to see only variable fonts. I got only three right now on my computer. So the one I put here, I can click this V at the top and I will see controls. Some fonts got two, some fonts got three or four controls. We can, in this font, we can control the width of it and weight of the font as well. 
in this nice slider. So variable fonts are special fonts that comes with more controls. We got those controls here behind this V letter. Very nice addition. What else? Pencil tool improvements only for designer this time. So pencil tool is the alternative to pen tool, some say. The pencil tool is over here. And while you are using the pencil tool, we are kind of controlling the, the tip of the pencil, but all of those notes are added automatically by the program. Okay, so in the pen tool, I adding those notes myself. Pencil tool, we kind of need to trust in the program to add them correctly, and it's not always right. So now it's a bit better, so the lines are smoother, but what I want to test out is a curvy end. So it's supposed to detect spiky turns like that finally and it is take a look we got a proper spiky node it's not a curvy node like in the past so that's nice we got spiky nodes when you turn your pencil quickly you will end up with a proper sharp node at that corner so i'm happy to see that by the way I'm still using the pressure I create before, so I can reset that so you can see the line. All right, take a look. It's a very sharp, and we don't have too many notes, so I like that. Definitely a huge improvement to Pencil Tool. Great, I just made a video about Pencil Tool last month, so now I need to redo it. Thanks. Okay, what's next? This is a very personal. Now we got a native support for ARM processes on Windows. It was already on Mac. We got this uh, Mac, like M1, M2, M3 support for a while now. And this finally arriving on Windows. This will be this huge push for ARM CPUs this year, I believe. So they're going to release several new laptops with the ARM CPU. That's not the first attempt, but this time they actually convince more companies to work on the native apps. And here is a native Avid designer. That's a good news for me. I was actually thinking about, about getting myself a Surface. So now it's one more argument for that. I think it's a really good news that we got in this native support now for ARM CPUs on Windows as well. Our news number six are rather small thing. We got improved imports. So if you got your files from like computer aid design software, some professional files like that, you want to import them into your designer and then make something with them. Kind of folders. Sometimes we do some visualizations on that. It's way better. The lines are way smoother now. So that's a great news, a very specific use. They add kind of support to this kind of files in the last update 2.4 and now they're still working on it to make it even better experience. So that's nice. And finally, we got some new cameras joining the fray. So now we can uh, import and process RAWs from some cameras from the list so we got some samsung galaxy phones we got a sony camera here that's the improvement thing fujifilm this was a huge last time last time they had 50 cameras and still like they still adding new cameras this time only six but still welcome improvement all right so we got some new camera support for affinity photo we got better imports if you're using computer aid design software and then you want to finish up with a designer now the native version of designer of photo and publisher is ready for windows arm cpus pencil tool was improved and it's way better experience now way smoother line we can use variable fonts we can generate QR codes easily with this new 
shape tool for QR codes. And we got brand new tool in Affinity Designer for adjusting the width of the stroke of the line. This update 2.5, when they opened the, the closed beta for it and then open beta for it, it was really nothing special. But at the very end of the life cycle of the beta, they keep adding those interesting features. And at the end, we got quite decent update. As I mentioned, we are halfway through this generation. So only four more updates. And then I hope we will see a great improvement again in form of Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, Affinity Publisher 3.0. All right. Feel free to write down in the comment section what do you think about this update. Keep in mind there are some other features, also improvements or small bug fixes that I didn't mention in this video to not make it too long. Like always, I'm going to do one more video later, maybe during the weekend, about features that are still missing. I always do that after each update. I do new features. That's this video. And the next video will be about still missing features and kind of a change log for our favorite apps. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you in the next one.